the process of involving Central Asian countries more in including in the cooperation bridges that we try to establish with nascent regional and sub-regional fora in Asia, a continent that has not a very uh, strong tradition of, uh, of uh, gathering in, in uh, collective uh, organizations, until recently at least, and also in bringing Afghanistan closer to what the OSCE had to offer. I will not elaborate here on Romania's contribution in Afghanistan. I would just say that uh, we are entertaining a self-sustained effort of already two years now, and is to be accounted for on primarily moral grounds, since it is very difficult to explain otherwise why Romanians are uh, putting resources and the, the lives of, of some of its youth at risk in, at, I think, 4,000 kilometers away from our country. We're also present in Iraq, where it is true that our today presence in stabilization, and reconstruction processes down there has a background of extensive participation in the 80s uh, when we contributed to the erection of civil infrastructure, civil economy in uh, Iraq. With that came a lot of related aspects that um, have to do with a better understanding of societal and individual mentalities down there, combined with our uh, experience of transition, which is more relevant than uh, uh, the experience of other Central European countries since we are the only one uh, to have had a regime change uh, achieved by violent means. Combined with, uh, with that, uh, we uh, always thought that we have a potential inspiration for um, um, what the international community and the Iraqis themselves are currently doing with their, their own countries. We have some, some positive experience to, to share and, and also the many mistakes we, we made throughout our transition and which could be avoided by, by Iraqis. Add to this thematic specialization, to these the thematic specializations that Romania developed in terms of transitional experience and expertise and how it could ease the dialogue with recovering states or areas of today's world as well as our particular story with respect to non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, the story of how a country in the like of Romania, which was the fifth or the sixth world uh, largest uh, arms exporter in the world in the late uh, 80s, can get transformed in the good guy of the class, a party to all existing legal or political regimes of limitation and a strong complier, so strong that it had, uh, I think two years ago, arms exports totaling a meager $40 million, which is peanuts in this area. These regional and thematic items that I mentioned as niche contributions that Romania brings to the policy making of NATO and the EU are largely overlapping with the agenda that the United Nations Security Council currently has, at least as far <coughs> as the Northern Hemisphere is concerned. You will see that in every item that, that the Security Council is currently considering in, in the Northern part of, uh, of the planet, you will always find their rather either an EU or a NATO contribution, sort of a regional sub contracting for, for the UN. I'm compelled to make the point at, uh, at uh, uh, this uh, stage that as an elected member of the Security Council for the period 2004-2005, Romania has a unique opportunity to bring its geostrategic profile that emerges in a context of accession to EU and NATO in sync with the global security agenda. You may wish to add to the above arguments the fact that Romania's earlier contributions in Africa could now be reactivated on a bigger scale as we move, for, we move towards participation in the mandatory EU cooperation for development policy. And as the EU itself starts mounting operations in support of peace and stability on the African continents in, continent in the like of the French-led Operation Artemis in, uh, in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, the EU is also having a distinct track record of interacting 
with the emerging cell phone sub-regional initiatives in Africa, in the like of the ECOWAS in Western Africa, SADC in, south, in the southern part of the continent. Also, we have a diplomatic tradition of honest bro brokerage and knowledge in the Middle East that can easily be re reactivated. The presence in the Council at this particular time is not only an opportunity for us to better shape up our own policies, but also for the Council to benefit from what Romania has to offer at a critical juncture in the policy making of the Council, whether we're talking about the process of implementing democratic standards in, in Kosovo that has started and will probably be followed by a status review on Kosovo in somewhere in 2005, at a critical point when an exit strategy of the international community from Bosnia is being thought of, when the future contribution of the UN shaping up post-Saddam Iraq is considered, or when new approaches are being devised to deal with the great bulk of African matters that are still lingering on the Council's agenda. At a time of change for the UN in general, for the Security Council in particular, as the World Organization moves towards celebrating six decades of existence, two years from now in 2006, I believe strongly that contributions coming from members that experience themselves change at the fastest pace, such as Romania's, are invaluable. Uh, these are some of uh, the thoughts uh, and, and the sort of overview of, of our main policy concerns, uh, uh, what our main policies concerns are. I wanted to make it as brief as possible in order to uh, maintain myself available for engaging. I'm very eager to take up your questions, comments, suggestions, criticism. Thank you very much. Open the floor to questions, comments. Just want to take something to write. Yes, please. Uh, you're talking about the assets domain. Could you be more specific to what those assets could be? I mean, if you're looking at software, how food in the Indian, wine belongs to Australia, and uh, Italy, and uh, banking, maybe to London. Where does Romania see itself? <coughs> as its major assets for continued growth. Well, I've been talking, uh, I've been limiting myself primarily to assets that have to do with its expertise in certain policy areas, in certain regions of the world, the fact that it can share its experience, its amazing experience of, of transition. But uh, if you take me in these uh, uh, more specific areas, I would tell you that, uh, yes, it is true that uh, Indians have a great love experience with the uh, with the software but we have uh, we have uh, uh, excellent hackers to be tackled uh, to be reckoned with and uh, and uh, the the fact is that we've been exporting entire generations of graduates from software um, uh, faculties uh, at a certain point in time i was uh, in uh, in uh, the in california <coughs> And uh, we had a gathering of uh, Romanians from all over the West Coast. There were many uh, younger ones who were all employed at Microsoft. And they said, and I don't have any reason to believe that this was not true, that Romanian was the second uh, uh, employed language in, in Microsoft. Now, with the, the good news is that for, for um, reasons that have to do with the enlightened uh, egoism, um, Software major software companies are setting, uh, are uh, opening a shop, uh, opening up shop in in Romania, because it is in the interest of of both parties to relocate production. Um, have um, for our uh, software experts um, revenues that uh, that are not comparable to the ones they would get here or in Germany, but that are fair enough for for Romania, decent enough uh, for for Romania with uh, them being able to navigate on the internal networks of these companies and not having to move physically elsewhere and having to do uh, having to to redo their lives all over all over again so this is this is a trend that uh, that is clearly 
uh, seen there. I, I hope I didn't open a...